Hello students. Today we will revise whatever we have completed till that. Okay, so till that we have completed cell cycle and mitosis. So let me revise by using this video. Adult human contains an estimated 100 trillion cells, and yet we start life as a single cell. To grow, develop, and repair tissue damage, we rely on cell division. In eukaryotic cells, this process is accomplished by a series of well-orchestrated steps called mitosis. Every day our bodies must produce millions of skin cells to replace those lost through normal activity. Each of these cells must have a complete complement of the genetic material. Prior to cell division, where the cell divides into two identical cells, the DNA needs to be replicated so that each daughter cell receives an exact copy. Following DNA replication, the chromosomes condense in the nucleus of the cell. DNA condenses by wrapping around cores of histone proteins forming nucleosomes. This beads on a string structure is called chromatin. As a cell prepares to divide, chromatin coils up further, shortening and condensing the chromosome. The replicated chromosomes are called sister chromatids. The replication of DNA and the formation of sister chromatids is one part of the entire cell cycle. To prepare for cell division, the cell goes through interphase, which can be divided into three distinct phases. During G1, or GAP1 phase, all the organelles and cytoplasmic components, including the centrioles in animal cells, replicate. Then during S, or synthesis phase, the DNA replicates. Finally, during G2, or GAP2 phase, all the enzymes needed to aid in the process of cell division are produced. Most eukaryotic cells spend a great deal of time in interphase, and a very short period of time actually dividing, a process called mitosis. The cell is now ready to go through mitosis, which consists of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. During prophase, the chromosomes condense and become visible, appearing as two sister chromatids held together at the centromere. The cytoskeleton disassembles as the spindle begins to form. In animal cells, centrioles play an important role in the distribution of the chromosomes in the dividing cell. The centrioles migrate to opposite poles, establishing a bridge of microtubules called the spindle apparatus, and the nuclear envelope breaks down. Towards the end of prophase, chromosomes attach, by proteins in their centromeres called kinetochores, to microtubules from each pole, moving the chromosomes toward the equator of the cell. During metaphase, all chromosomes are aligned at the equator of the cell, called the metaphase plate. Anaphase begins with the degradation of proteins that hold sister chromatids together, freeing individual chromosomes. The free chromosomes are then pulled by their kinetochores to opposite poles. At telophase, a cleavage furrow forms in the center of the cell. This indentation is made from a constricting belt of actin filaments surrounding the inside of the cell's circumference. Chromosomes cluster at opposite poles and begin decondensing as the nuclear envelope reforms around them. The spindle apparatus disassembles as the microtubules are broken down into tubulin monomers that can be used to form the cytoskeleton of the daughter cells. In animal cells, cytokinesis completes cell division by extending the cleavage furrow to completely separate the newly formed daughter cells. Since plant cell walls cannot be constricted by actin fibers, vesicles form an expanding membrane partition called the cell plate. Like animal cells, plant cells use cytokinesis to finish the division of the contents of the cytoplasm between the two identical daughter cells. During the cell cycle, certain checkpoints are encountered to make sure the process is occurring accurately. And if it is not, the cell cycle will stop at the checkpoint and correct or possibly inhibit that cell from dividing. The first checkpoint is the G1S checkpoint and is considered the primary point at which the cell cycle continues or stops.
external signals and growth factors can influence the cell cycle and affect the progress at or before this critical checkpoint. The G2M checkpoint allows cells that have successfully completed all three phases of interphase to begin mitosis. The last checkpoint is the spindle checkpoint, ensuring that all chromosomes have attached to the spindle in preparation for anaphase. Growth factors, the size of the cell and the nutritional state of the cell, are all contributing factors in cell cycle regulation, ensuring that only certain cells divide at appropriate times. Once all the checkpoints in interphase are cleared, mitosis can occur. From interphase to cytokinesis, the entire process of cell division can take on average 10 to 20 hours in a typical plant or animal cell. Depending on the nature and use of the cell, the process can happen at different frequencies as well. In humans, our skin cells have a high turnover rate due to wear and tear and go through mitosis very frequently, whereas other cells such as adult neurons and muscle cells rarely divide. The accuracy of mitosis, as well as the consistency of the checkpoints during interphase, ensure that most cells in a eukaryotic organism can produce identical copies of themselves. This process allows for growth and repair to prolong overall physiology as well as life itself. Thinking about cells, they can reproduce and divide up by themselves. One or two division forms known as mitosis. A mother cell divides into identical daughters, perfect copy, remember this. Two identical copies, K. Two sets of chromosomes, to clear DNA, more cell divisions in your body system used for your development. And also, like a one in mitosis, make perfect copies, ha! Huh? Let's start with the interface. Right before mitosis takes place, the DNA within the cell is copied, and such a job's copied, the role that this will play is key. And now we move to the prophase, where chromosomes condense into egg shapes, mitex in the grows, X into opposite poles, and hey, dissolve the nuclear membrane. Metaphase is the next one, chromosomes fendil into the middle, and then they're all lined up. Every chromosome is two kinetochores, with microtubules circuit to opposite spindle poles. Hey, and now we on to the anaphase, where sister chromatodes separate. Thanks to the motor proteins moving along microtubules as molecular machines. Oh, hello, Mr. Tello, almost in dividing into two and then to cell growth. Then meiotic spindle disappear, the nuclei set their form here and here. And when the cytoplasm splits, conquering with telophase is called cytokinesis. It's different whether your cell is in plants or animals. Just remember, after this, you have two identical cells. Inner pro meta, yeah, Anna, yeah, Tello. During cell cycle, regulation must be there. Okay, so if regulation do not occur, person cell cycle may be disturbed. And as a result of that, person may suffer from a cancer. So cell cycle regulation play very important role for healthy cell cycle. Okay, so let me understand what are the cell cycle regulation and which type of checkpoints are uh, performing their duties for cell cycle regulation. Cell cycle. The cell cycle has three states, which are quiescent, interphase, and mitosis, and five phases. G0, G1, S, G2, and M. The quiescent state, also known as the senescent state, comprises of the G0 phase. Examples, neurons, cardiac muscle, and RBCs. Interphase state consists of G1, S, and G2 phases. And the mitosis state consists of the M phase. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase occur during this phase. The three major cell cycle checkpoints are the end of G1, the end of G2, and during metaphase of the M phase. Progression through checkpoints is regulated by cyclins, cyclin-dependent kinases, and tumor suppressors. During the G1 phase, Cell cycle progression is controlled by a variety of different cellular mechanisms such as tumor suppressors, genes that code for transcription factors, 
proteins that detect DNA damage, enzymes that allow the cell to progress to the S phase, and signaling molecules that activate those enzymes. The gene E2F regulates expression of transcription genes and cyclin-dependent kinase 2, cyclin E, and cyclin A. If there is significant DNA damage, P53 stimulates production of P21. P21 binds and inhibits all cyclin CDK complexes, which leads to arrest of cell cycle until the DNA damage is repaired and P21 levels drop. The tumor suppressor retinoblastoma protein inhibits E2F expression. Cyclin D CDK4 and cyclin D CDK6 complexes phosphorylate retinoblastoma protein that leads to inactivation of retinoblastoma protein and expression of E2F. The expression of E2F then leads to the expression of transcription genes and formation of cyclin E CDK2. Therefore, the cell is pushed into the S phase. Cell cycle regulation in S and M phase. Cyclin A CDK2 is required for DNA synthesis. Cyclin A CDK1 and cyclin B CDK1 promote the events of mitosis. Towards the end of mitosis, the anaphase promoting complex causes ubiquitination and destruction of cyclin A CDK1 and cyclin B CDK1 that leads to termination of M phase with anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. The most radiosensitive phases are the G2 phase and mitosis. The least radiosensitive phase is the latter part of the S phase. Before we start next topic, that is a meiosis. Okay, let me differentiate between meiosis and mitosis first. Cell cycle is one of the most breathtaking processes that helps the cell to not only grow, but also divide. We know that a cell cycle has two major phases. One helps in the preparation of the cell for the division. Can you name the preparatory phase of the cell cycle? That's the right answer. It's called the interphase. And moving to the other phase, it carries out the scission of the cell. And what is that phase called? Correct. It's the M phase where M stands for either mitosis or meiosis. And how does the cell decide whether to undergo mitosis or meiosis? Well, that depends on various factors and the type of cell undergoing division. Keep your eyes glued to the video to spot the differences between mitosis and meiosis. Let me help you with the first difference between the two processes. Mitosis occurs in somatic or body cells, while meiosis occurs exclusively in the reproductive cells. That means mitosis occurring irrespective of whether the individual is a male or a female gives rise to somatic cells which are exact copies of the parent cells. On the other hand, meiosis occurs in males and females, giving rise to haploid sperm and egg cells respectively. The process of meiosis, however, has different names in both the sexes. Yes, due to the different cells produced as an end result, meiosis is also referred to as oogenesis, that is the process of ovum production in females, and spermatogenesis, that is the sperm production process in males. Another major difference is that mitosis is used as a mode of asexual reproduction in lower organisms, while meiosis helps in forming gametes for sexual reproduction. Now, let's move ahead with the next difference. Have a look at these images. Observing this image, we can easily notice the most basic differences between the two. Let's begin noting down each difference individually. The first on the list is that mitosis has only one cell division, while meiosis involves two successive cell divisions. That simply means mitosis is a single step division, while meiosis is a two step division. And this results in meiosis having two phases, namely meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Can you note down the second difference in the list? Correct. 
Mitosis produces two daughter cells, while meiosis produces four daughter cells. And is there something remarkable that we haven't discussed yet? That's right. Now let's move on to the next major difference. This difference is based on the chromosomal number of the daughter cells. In mitosis, the daughter cells are deployed with two sets of chromosomes, just like the parent cell. While during meiosis, the daughter cells produced are haploid with only one set of chromosome. These daughter cells are called gametes, have exactly half the number of chromosomes from the parent cells. The former difference also gives Q about one more difference between the two. What could that be? Well, the image clearly depicts that all the four daughter cells produced by meiosis are genetically different from each other, while the two daughter cells that are produced by mitosis are genetically similar to each other. Now let's move on to the next difference. But before that, can you tell me how many stages of division does the mitosis process have? Correct, it has four stages of division. And is it the same for meiosis as well? The answer is a definite no. Since meiosis involves two rounds of division, that is, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, the process has a total of eight stages of division. Now, moving on to the next difference, this point has been studied by us in the lower grades as well. We have studied that mitosis occurs in all organisms except viruses. And which organisms can have meiosis? Meiosis occurs only in plants, animals and fungi. Now, let's dive deeper and compare the stages of mitosis and meiosis to explore some more differences between them. The first stage of meiosis 1, that is prophase 1, is very long, consisting of five substages. On the other hand, prophase of mitosis is comparatively shorter than prophase 1. Crossing over does not occur in prophase, while definitely occurs in prophase 1. Independent assortment is technically absent in the metaphase of mitosis, while it occurs in metaphase 1. The separation of chromatids takes place during anaphase, and on the other hand, the separation of homologous chromosomes takes place during anaphase 1, and the separation of sister chromatids during anaphase 2. So, these were the major differences between mitosis and meiosis. Let's summarize them in a single table. Before signing off, tell me one thing. Have you ever wondered what important tasks do these two processes perform in our body? Well, mitosis helps in the healing and repairing of the cells and tissues of our body. It's also responsible for the growth and the development of the body. Meiosis, however, helps exclusively in producing gametes. This ensures genetic diversity. And with this, we come to an end of the concept of cell cycle. To learn some more cool concepts related to cell processes, do keep surfing on the waves of cell biology. In next lecture, we will learn meiosis 1. So, till then, goodbye.